Tonight on KXN News at 5, new data shows Gen Z is driving less. And it's not just because they're using ride shares. The other reasons they may not be getting behind the wheel. And wind chill temperatures tomorrow morning plummeting below freezing. We'll have your weekend forecast tracking a cold front in first warning weather. The Russian prison agency announces the death of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. The warning U.S. officials have given in response. Governor Abbott is back on the border today to announce a new base camp for Texas troops. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Britt Moreno. And I'm Mike Rush in for Daniel Marine. It's the latest expansion of Operation Lone Star that the governor argues has stemmed illegal immigration and has drawn legal challenges nationwide. Ryan Chandler brings us the latest. A new base on the border. It will amass a large army in a very strategic area. Texas military leaders joining Governor Abbott to announce an 80-acre complex along the Rio Grande, complete with three command posts, private rooms, and a helipad. It will increase the speed and flexibility of the Texas National Guard to be able to respond to crossings. Currently, about 3,000 Texas troops are deployed to the border, many staying in cramped conditions hotel rooms, some living an hour away from their post. What we're doing by building this is providing a better quality of life for the soldiers. We're doing it and saving the taxpayers of Texas at the same time while ensuring that we become even more efficient by having more time on target with these soldiers. But some Eagle Pass natives are apprehensive. Their presence here has already impacted. You know, life is very different now than it used to be two years ago. Jesse Fuentes sued Governor Abbott over the buoy barriers, one of the previous expansions of Operation Lone Star. He worries this latest development will hurt the quality of life in Eagle Pass. As a community, we don't have a say in this. We just have to put up with it unless, like I said, the federal government intervenes. Governor Abbott argues his efforts are necessary to fill the gaps he says the federal government is leaving. Texas will defend itself uh, from the lawlessness. Ryan Chandler, KXAN News. The base is meant to be a central hub for up to 2,300 National Guard troops. Texas has spent about $10 billion on Operation Lone Star so far. The governor did not specify how much this new base will cost. Well, today a Harris County judge rejected Attorney General Ken Paxton's request to dismiss his securities fraud charges in a case that's been going on for years. The judge's rejection means Paxton will have to stand trial for allegations that he defrauded investors. Earlier this month, Paxton's team asked the judge to dismiss the charges, claiming his right to a speedy trial has been violated in the case that's gone on for over eight years. The charges stem from Paxton's actions in 2011 when he allegedly sought out investors in a tech company without saying that he was being paid by the company to promote its stock. The trial is currently set to begin on April the 15th. We want to take a quick turn now to the weather because the weather headline is really going to change. We've had some warm weather and now things are about to get really cold. We're tracking the cold front moving into Austin as we speak and you can actually see it over Lake Travis on our cameras. Check out those dark clouds over sometimes islands. 75, a very warm and cloudy day. And yes, a few little isolated showers are starting to pop up. First, the temperatures, not a drastic immediate drop, but it's 72 in Austin. Upper 50s, though, a couple counties away in the northern hill country. This wind shift itself picking up a little bit of dust, which is actually visible on the radar. That's the front. Just moved through Georgetown, approaching Round Rock. Cooler air filtering into Leander and Cedar Park as we speak. No rain on that part of the front yet, but look what happened in the past 10 minutes. A big downpour just popped up heading toward Blanco and Highway 281. A couple more pop-ups like this are possible for the next couple hours. Coming up, I'll show you how fast temperatures fall, how low the wind chills go, and also a look toward your Austin Marathon plans. Thanks, David. See you in a bit. A New York judge ordered former President Donald Trump to pay over $350 million in damages in the civil fraud trial against Trump and his company. He's also banned from running a business in New York for three years. Trump denied any wrongdoing, calling the case a fraud. The New York Attorney General sought a $370 million fine in the civil business fraud fraud trial, alleging he and his company engaged in falsifying financial statements and business records. This is the second judgment weighed against the former president this year after he was ordered to pay over $83 million in the defamation case brought against him by writer E. Jean Carroll. 
The former president is also facing four criminal tri trials this year, with the first set to start at the end of next month. U.S. officials, including President Biden, are reacting to the death of Alexei Navalny, the leading critic of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Navalny died in a Russian prison through more than a decade as a powerful opposition leader. Navalny was arrested countless times. He survived a poisoning and suffered worsening conditions in a remote Arctic prison. Prison officials say he felt unwell this morning after taking a walk, lost consciousness, and died. Today, President Biden said Putin is responsible for the 47-year-old's death. Russian officials deny it. If confirmed, this would be a further sign of Putin's brutality. Whatever story they tell, let us be clear, Russia is responsible. All of this is taking place less than a month before the presidential election in Russia. Many opposition candidates have kept themselves off the ballot, and President Putin is expected to win another term. Two minors have been charged in connection to the shooting at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade that left one person dead and 22 others injured on Wednesday. According to Missouri's Jackson County Family Court, the suspects were charged yesterday, and they are now being held at a juvenile detention center on charges of resisting arrest and gun-related charges. Another suspect was held for about 24 hours before he was released, with police determining he had nothing to do with the shooting. The investigation is now focused on ballistics, looking at shell casings and bullets that were retrieved from the site of the shooting, with police trying to compare them to weapons that have been recovered and see if other weapons and other suspects may have been involved. Still to come, the two-time Olympic gold medalist swimming his way to another shot at the podium. The important lesson he's carried with him on his journey to Paris. And Gen Z seems to be less interested in getting their license to drive. Why? Coming up. Time to get your running shoes ready and carb load as the Austin Marathon is this Sunday. But before you lace up, here's what you need to know for the big day. Now starting the starting line for the Austin Marathon Half Marathon and 5K is at 2nd and Congress. Look for road closures in the area starting today. Participants can arrive at the venue beginning around 530 in the morning. The marathon and half marathon will start at 730 and then the 5K begins at 745. A Tesla Cybertruck will lead over 19,000 runners through the route. One of those racers is Jonah Rayford. I am a little bit nervous and a little bit excited because this is a new challenge and I love to do something different, so I feel like this is a good opportunity. Now, Rayford, who is visually impaired, has braved rain and freezing temperatures to train for the marathon. Marathon and half marathon runners will finish at 9th and Congress, while 5K participants will finish at 2nd and Congress. The marathon winner will earn a $20,000 prize. Good luck to them all. Gen Z is driving less and staying home more. In a broad shift that's never been seen before in older generations, <laughs> and experts are conducting research to identify the driving forces behind the trend. Getting a driver's license may not feel like a ticket to freedom for a lot of teens and young adults like it used to. Less of Gen Z, which is roughly defined as people born between 1997 and 2010, are on the roads. Today, just 25% of 16-year-olds have any kind of a driver's license. Compare that to nearly three decades ago when that number was more than 40%. NBC News says the trend seems to be linked to things like ride sharing, public transportation, and food delivery apps. One expert also cites a financial hierarchy when it comes to spending, with less of a focus on getting a car and paying for insurance and gas, and more on groceries and paying off student loans. <laughs> I think driving and owning a car just is kind of falling down because there are so many new options that they can utilize. It just isn't the thing that like used to be the most priority for other people. Well, coming up, meet the decorated Olympic hopeful who is working to take his lifelong love for swimming back to the world stage. And today, our warmest day in a full month. And the warmest day of the month, 77 degrees where we checked in today in Austin. We've got a couple showers popping up and a much colder stretch in front of us. Next in your forecast. In this week's journey to Paris, for some athletes, making the Olympic team is a lifelong goal and dream. But for long-distance swimmer Bobby Finke, being raised the right way by his mother and father, led him to not one, but two gold medals in Tokyo. Eileen Nachuk has the story of a boy who just simply loved swimming and one day got really good at it.
two-time gold medalist. Yeah, it kind of came out of nowhere a little bit. The only goal I ever had of him is just don't be a couch potato. Mom knows best. And be happy. Bobby Fink wound up taking her advice, happy and in a moment realizing along with his entire family, swimming would be his go-to sport. It didn't really become a goal until 2016. All three kids were at trial set that year. It was my second time there, his first time there. The Fink siblings have spent most of their lives in the water and are inseparable. Just a few years apart in age, the three have been attached at the hip since they were born. There was no expectation for him to do anything, really. He's always been kind of an underdog up until that point. There was a moment his family knew he'd be great. Bobby was 16 years old, competing in the Pan Pacific Swimming Championships. We were just expecting him to swim, and then we were going to book it home. And all of a sudden, Bobby is sixth going into finals. So I had to change the, change the flight plans and everything. I just started crying. I was like, he's going to do this. Like, he's really going to do this. And from that moment on, like, he's just kept doing this. That's really when it first started, just to, just to make the team. I didn't even think about medals until after prelims of Tokyo. That's when I was like, oh shoot, I can, I can medal. Hey, I'm kind of good at this. Yeah. <laughs> One thing you should know about Bobby is that he's humble, but competitive. He gets it from his two older sisters who ultimately inspired his love for swimming. I wanted to be with them and I wanted to compete against them and beat them because I'm the younger brother. And that was his, his goal was to beat his sisters. The Fink siblings all wanted to win at everything and I mean everything. They would literally rush out of the car. Who's going to be the first one out of the car? Who's going to be the first one into the car? We'd race to the water fountain. We would race to the car. We would race to get out of the car. But the most important lesson that his sisters taught him is simple. Just to have fun. <laughs> it, it's, it's really that at the end of the day. It's just, you know, be confident in yourself um, and, and just have fun playing, playing the sport you love. On the journey to Paris, I'm Miley Natchuk. The U.S. Olympic swim trials are June 15th through the 23rd at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. First warning weather with Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans. Well, 516, and before you hit the road for your Friday plans, pay attention to what is coming. We've got a line of dark clouds just northwest of Austin. That is actually a cold front moving into town. After the warmest day in a month, we hit 77. It's still in the 70s early this evening, but look at the air that's just north of us. 60s in Waco, 51 in Abilene, 40 degrees right now in Amarillo. It's not a terribly sharp Arctic cold front, but this is the first big cool down that we've seen of the month with the coldest weather of the month on the way over the weekend. You can see the wind shift moving through Williamson County. That's not actually rain, just some dust and particulate picked up by the wind. That's what's moving into Austin shortly, although it may fire an isolated shower along it like we have in Blanco. Blanco, certainly not a severe thunderstorm, but some pretty heavy rain in that little pocket. And as I mentioned, we may see a little bit more of that development over the next couple hours. So we can't rule out a little 10% chance of rain. This is one of our most aggressive models. Not sure we'll see this much, but let me take you hour by hour. 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, rock, no, 9 o'clock. You can, <laughs> I didn't plan that. Uh, you can see the possibility of a couple isolated showers. Again, I'm not sure we'll see as much as what you saw there. Okay, how about the temperatures? This is the big impact which is coming here. Upper 60s in Austin uh, over the next hour, but by 7.30, notice how the wind shift has worked its way through. 50s in the hill country by dinner time, and by 10 p.m. tonight, the cold front has exited even our eastern counties. It's 56 and windy, starting to feel a little cooler in Austin. Tomorrow morning, it's not a little cooler. It is quite cold. Temperatures for many falling into the middle and upper 30s. Wind chills in the 20s, or at least just below Low freezing and tomorrow afternoon it's a very different day we'll see the sun come out late but high temperatures capped in the upper 40s in many areas tomorrow night I'm getting a little more convinced that we see a pretty widespread freeze if the skies clear out and the winds die down which I think they should we will be 32 33 even in Austin and colder everywhere else so freeze preps not tonight but tomorrow night probably a wise choice 
Weekend forecast other than the gusty winds tomorrow, we'll see slow clearing. Morning clouds, afternoon sun, high in town of only 51. Sunday, what a great winter day. Cool sunshine with a high of 58. And as I mentioned, the winds dying down and the temperatures bottoming out just in time for the marathon. This is a pretty perfect marathon forecast, if I may say so myself. 32 under sunny skies with no wind at the start and a beautiful morning for half finishers, full marathon finishers, or the KXA on Simple Health 5K also going on down there on Sunday. Okay, tonight, not freezing cold, 40 degrees in town with gusty winds and mostly cloudy skies. The winds are a bit of an issue tomorrow. Slow clearing with some sunshine late. High temperatures capped to 51. Not quite wind advisory territory, but also not far from it. Saturday night, it's possible we hit 32 for the first time this month in Austin, but look at the warm-up behind it. 70 on President's Day, 80 the following day, and middle 80s in the forecast next Thursday. I think we've got seven dry days ahead of us if you don't see an isolated shower tonight. By the way, that 84 tomorrow, or on Thursday rather, far from a record high. Those are in the upper 90s late next week. Thank you so much, David. After facing outrage and major opposition, French President Emmanuel Macron has shelved plans to force iconic booksellers along the River Seine to remove their stalls for the 2024 Olympic opening ceremony. Paris booksellers who have operated from little dark green kiosks on the banks of the Seine for 150 years argued their work is a symbol of the city like the Eiffel Tower, as well as a big tourist attraction. Police had initially ordered the removal of about 570 stalls over security concerns. The president asked the interior minister and the head of Paris police that all the booksellers be protected and none be forced to move for the opening ceremony. Paris 2024 organizers expect at least 300,000 people to attend the opening ceremony on July 26th on the Seine, during which athletes and delegations will sail along the river. Still to come, researchers discover a shipwreck in Lake Superior, bringing them closer to solving a decades-long mystery. The one question that remains lost in the deep. Tonight, Dan's all-star panel tackles it all. The latest on the shocking Bahamas assault case. Plus, how Harvey Weinstein's conviction could be overturned and new developments in the Rachel Morin murder investigation. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live, starting at 9 Eastern. News Nation's Morning in America is now on the weekends, too. Every Saturday and Sunday at 7 Eastern, wake up with anchor Hannah Doba. Here's a look at today's top stories. Start your weekend off right with Morning in America, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, only on News Nation. To find News Nation, go to joinnn.com. Right now, what next for Donald Trump and his company after a judge delivered a massive judgment against him in his fraud trial in New York and just approved the new therapy proving effective against the deadliest form of skin cancer? What patients should know tonight. An over 80-year-long mystery on the high seas just got one step closer to being solved. Researchers discovered the SS Arlington steamship in the depths of Lake Superior. Underwater drone footage shows the World War II ship's helm, smokestack, and still intact steering wheel. The Arlington sank after it hit thick fog in a severe storm in May of 1940. All 16 crewmen abandoned ship and survived. However, one question remains unanswered. Why the captain chose to go down with the Arlington as the lone fatality in the wreck. The images released today are part of an ongoing investigation to discover the full story behind the Arlington's cargo and sinking. Well, the Fort Worth Zoo's newest baby came into the world with a bang. This baby gorilla arrived early, so cute, right? Following an emergency C-section delivery. The decision was made after the mother showed signs of preeclampsia, a potentially life-threatening blood pressure condition. Human medical experts were brought in to assist veterinarians, and we're told both mom and baby Jamila are both doing well. But because mom has not bonded with baby, zoo staff have been hand raising her for the last five weeks. Zookeepers and zoo staff continued constant care for the premature infant, including bottle feeding every two to three hours, ensuring appropriate temperature regulation, monitoring her weight and eliminations, all while ensuring the baby was near other gorillas to learn the smells, sights, and sounds of her troop. The zoo has now decided to switch their focus and train another female gorilla for possible surrogacy. How cute.
Coming up tonight on KXN at 7, a new episode of Password, then at 8, an all-new Dateline, and then join us back here for KXAN News at 10 o'clock. You can join us an hour earlier for KXAN News at 9 on CW Austin, and here is where to find us.